Fight fans around the world, are you ready for the ultimate knockout experience? If you're a true lover of the sweet science, craving in-depth analysis, exclusive interviews, and the latest updates from the world of boxing, look no further. Ringside Boxing is a proud sponsor of the Zapata brand boxing podcast to deliver knockout deals with every episode. Visit ringside.com forward slash podcast and unlock a jaw-dropping 40% off selected brands. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just stepping into the ring for the first time, Ringside Boxing has something for everyone. Don't miss out on this incredible deal. Elevate your boxing experience with Ringside. Ringside, the best in boxing. A lot of things happening since the last time we talked. Um, the big news coming out, which one week away, which is this is like really hard to do to find a replacement here. Uh, the big pay-per-view fight with the debut of Amazon Prime. It couldn't have happened at a worse time. Keith Thurman out with a, it appears to be a torn bicep or something of, of that nature. I saw the black and blue. It appears that way. Sebastian Fendorabak is in now. He was already on the card, so it's not an issue of him not being in shape. What do you think about this? Is it a better fight for the show for their debut? I don't think financially it's a better show because Keith Thurman is a bigger name, even though he hasn't fought. In, it feels like 20 years. So Keith Thurman is definitely the bigger name and he was going to get more casuals in. Uh, I it's it's a different fight. He's fighting a, a, a guy who's active. Who's I mean, he's six five and a half. So mm -hmm. it, it's certainly a, a, I don't know if it's a better fight. It could be a more difficult fight. Um, but six five and a half, the towering inferno. That guy's a problem for anyone. I guess the weird thing is, George. We both love this sport. But only in boxing can a guy who got brutally knocked out in his last fight, in his next fight, he's fighting for not one belt, but I believe there's a, a vacant belt in yeah. that mix. So he goes from being knocked out to he's got a chance to have two belts should he beat Zoo. So I think it's an interesting fight. They had to do something. I mean, what else could they do on such short notice? So it makes sense to take a guy that's already on the card who – you know, he, he's he got some name recognition. So, I mean, well, they're doing what they can to save it. What They're, they're saving what was, I, I always thought was a brutal pay-per-view card. It's even more brutal now, but they did what they had to do. You, you said interesting fight, okay? Is it an interesting fight or is it a closer fight? And I say that only because Keith Thurman's been out for so long, and this is what happens when you're yeah. not active. And I can tell you right now, you know I was dealing with an injury not long ago. If you are not active, especially the second you hit over that 35 mark, it, things happen and you don't even realize it. I mean, Paulie was talking about how, you know, late in his career was injury and, and small injuries, small injuries yep. that you lose week, week and a half. You need those week, week and a half to train. Uh, is this a better fight or is it a, or is it an interesting, an interesting fight? You would have to think it's a better fight because of all the reasons you said about Keith Thurman. He's inactive. He's, he's smaller. He's older. Uh, Fundora's bigger, he's younger, he's more active. So I think it's, I personally think it's a, a tougher fight for Zoo than Keith Thurman would have been. And I give Zoo uh, credit for, for taking it. He could have, mm. it was, it was his option. He could have said, no, I'm sure they put pressure on him. And you, you know how it is. You don't get paid unless you fight. You don't get paid on a salary. You only get paid when that fight happens. So I give him credit for taking the challenge. I think it's a it's definitely a tougher fight for him. The thing with uh, Fandor that I don't don't understand is he doesn't fight like a big guy. For one, <laughs> right. he fights like a smaller guy, and if he gets caught for some reason, he, if he gets caught, I think he would get knocked out, especially against uh, someone like a Tim Zhu. I'm not saying that that uh, Fandor punches harder than Keith Thurman. I think it's a it's about even. It's about even. Just because uh, Th Thurman's never fought higher than one, well, he fought fifty four a couple times, but he really is at one forty seven. That's really where yeah. he's at. That's where his, his comfort zone is. But he should he should fight a totally different fight, and that's why I think he's going to be a problem in this fight. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's six five and a half at one hundred and fifty four pounds. You'd think that's a guy who's going to be on the outside and use his jab, and he doesn't, and it it puts him at at risk. And he's shown that he can be knocked down. He's shown he can be knocked out. That's not a good combination. It'd be different no. if he had this hellacious chin, you know, just like a James Tony type chin. That's different. But he doesn't. He can be hit. He can be hurt. He can be knocked out. And I think Zoo, 
is going to beat him. I think it, it it's going to take some rounds to to figure that guy out. Uh, I don't think he's going to blow right through him, but you, you never know. Fandora, you you don't know how his psyche is. His last mm-hmm. fight, he was knocked out. You would think that he's recovered, but I'm not in his camp. I'm not around him. But he's getting it, a big shot. It reminds me of a uh, Chico Corrales. He reminds me of that type of fighter where he could get hurt from a punch that he doesn't see coming, and they're coming from different angles. As a guy that he doesn't, Chico never used his sides. Never used his side. He loved banging inside with you, which, it. which was mind-boggling to me when he's fighting Floyd. I, I, it was mind-boggling. I couldn't believe that he would do that. But that's the type of fighter that can give you trouble if you're expecting to be outboxed. Hey, you but, know what? I don't want to switch subjects, but you brought up mm-hmm. Chico and Floyd. Yep. Uh, I was with HBO for that fight, and I was I was in the production truck. I was doing graphics. I remember at that time... Corrales was about to go to jail uh, because really? there, there was some kind of, I think it was a domestic, domestic. incident. Yes, it was. You're right. You're right. So I remember we HBO had cameras in the locker room. It was maybe, maybe an hour before the fight. This guy mm-hmm. was literally eating this giant sandwich, like a hoagie or a sub sandwich. He was eating a sandwich and, and, and we were like, this guy's about to fight. In in an hour, hour and a half, he was uh, in a different mindset for that fight. I think Floyd would have beat him anyway, but he was in right. a different mindset. And you, when you brought up Chico and Floyd, it just it just reminded me of that. It was bizarre to see this guy eating in the locker room right before a fight. I thought that was going to be Floyd's kryptonite. I did. I I thought I thought Floyd, if he would, I thought Floyd fighting a Chico. Or well, which Chico prior to fighting Floyd, where, you know, I thought, okay, that guy could be his kryptonite, or a Margarito type of fighter, and you know, you know Floyd's just that good. He was that good that he, he dissected him. That's when know, he was I pretty boy. He was pretty boy. That was then. pretty boy. Yep. So. And that was, and this is kind. Of, it's almost similar to what Devin Haney's going through right now, going through the pretty boy stage, do uh, uh, going at, and I think this fight against Ryan Garcia, if we switch gears a little bit. Will it's going to kind of excel a little bit more, but there's something a little bit I'm thinking about here. Ryan Garcia, I don't think should be fighting, and I, and I I, I can't. Agreed. I was coming across TMZ.com just yesterday. They said Chris Simon is a hockey player. Was was a hockey player years ago. Uh, played for the Colorado Avalanche. Committed suicide. CTE. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could say the S word on YouTube, uh, but that's what happened. And they said the, his his family come out in a statement said it was a CTE. Okay. If there are signs of that, because they know we know that boxing, getting hit in your front here, it, that affects your reasoning. And I'm not saying that this is what's going on with Ryan Garcia. But if that is the case, even a slight bit, why in the world are you sending him in the ring with him? Uh, well, I know you say I greed. It, I know you it's, say greed, it's, but... it's, it, it's greed and money. I, I think the last time we talked, we talked about yeah. this, and and it's, it's greed and money. And I, I will always go back to how they... They they uh they forced a shell of Muhammad Ali to fight and he did too a, a a guy who was was damaged and they let him fight because of money. So this Ryan Garcia thing though it's 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 never been as bizarre as it is now and it took a turn right before that second press conference and it's just been it's just been bizarre world. You go on his social media, you know there were times he said. I'm not going to talk anything except boxing. And he's still talking about everything under the sun and he's crying and he's doing weird things in the ring. If this is selling the fight, it's the most unprofessional, bizarre way to sell it. Unless this thing does like 3 million pay-per-view buys, which I don't think it will. You got, you have to think something is, is off with the guy. Two things. Do you think one, Derek James is checked out and two, you say it's selling the pay per view. You think the sponsors would start saying, "Hey, I'm out. I'm not. I'm not dealing with this." But I don't think they will because they know he's got 10 million followers. So I think they're thinking, "Let's get this kid to the finish line," and the finish line is just getting in the ring. Let's get him to the ring so we can all get paid. Derek James, I don't know. You know, I know Derek James, uh, and I've reached out to him a few times, and I haven't heard back. I, I know there was that one uh, 
that one post of Ryan Garcia where he was slow motion boxing and they zoomed in on yeah. Derek and he had his, I don't know if you, if he's checked out Derek, Derek cares about the fighters he works with mm -hmm. and he's a professional. So, but he might be, I, I don't know. I, I really wanted to talk to him, but I understand that he's not speaking to people right now. It'd be interesting to hear what he says after the fight. That's really what I would like because he's really the guy. If he's training with him every day, he knows his mindset better than anyone. Yeah, and, and they, they did this last time where um, Joe Goose, in the, after it was over, was like, this guy was a nightmare to work with. He's untrainable. He's whatever, which I thought was wrong. I don't. I don't. I think Joe should have taken the high road there because you put yeah. that kid in a bad spot. He just got knocked out, and, and it wasn't a bad knock. I wasn't a vicious knock. I was a, a shot that I would have went down. But I mean, it, it just was. A, it was. You know, he's already going through. Why throw the kick more dirt on him? I mean, maybe that affected him a little bit or not. But Joe Guzman shouldn't have said that. But you will find out. You boxing's a small little circle. You're gonna find out what really was going on. Wouldn't it be something if he was really trolling everybody he won? <laughs> I say you never know just because it's never been this bizarre with him. He's kind of a weird guy, but it's never, ever been this off-the-wall bizarre where it's the, he seems like he's a head case, a mental case. And if they come out afterwards and he says, ah, I was fooling you. I don't know, man. I don't think it's cool if he if he is if this was his no. way of trolling people. Um, no, because you got to take mental know. health seriously. You got to take mental health seriously. You do, because I've I believe me, I've had people and I've known people extremely close to me that have gone through that. It's difficult. It is. Yeah. And now, could you imagine putting all those lights on you and you have millions of millions of people watch? I mean, I don't even know how you would get to the ring. How you get to the ring at that point? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't, I cannot, uh, I have no idea what he's going through because you're right under that kind of spotlight, but all fighters are under it to some degree or, or another. He's, he's under a different cut. He's under this, that social media spotlight. So he's got more of the, the casual eyes on him. But again, it's never been more bizarre than this. I mean, tank, you all, everyone knew Tank was a guy that could could hurt him, and you would mm -hmm. think if he's going to blow up, that would be the fight he did it. But uh, he didn't have any of these incidents, and now it's Devin Haney, a guy who's more of a boxer. He's not like a. It's not like he's going in the ring against the Mike Tyson, and that's no mm -hmm. shot to Haney. I just don't. I don't understand it. It seems like he shouldn't fight. I. I'm like you. I don't think he should. Well, did and did you also see where the the New York Athletic Commission supposedly yeah. asked? For, now I don't know if that's true. I, I don't think they they admitted to it. Uh, but but he was crying and saying, you know, I'm going to sue them. Uh, they can't do that. They didn't do it for Mike Tyson and this. So, <laughs> I, I, but but all fighters will tell you they're crazy. All fighters say, yeah, yeah. You, you have to be a little crazy to get into the ring. Oh, so. you do. You do. I mean, the, the, yeah, everybody's a little nutty. Um, I don't think uh, Ryan Ryan Garcia has ever passed the bar exam to, to be an attorney. Right. Uh, that would never stand. Uh, they, they're, go, they're looking after his well-being. And you know how fighters are. They are invincible. It doesn't matter. You almost have to save them from each other yeah. because of their because of their pride. It, that's, that's the way fair. most people are. Most of those fighters are. So his throwing that around, I think that was... I think it was more of the state athletic commission, and I have and I have I haven't spoken to them. I spoke to a different commission. Um, they're looking at the protection of the fighter. They're saying even if they suggested it, there's no way that they 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 can do whatever they want. The state athletic commission, if they tell you we want you to to do this, taking a drug test or whatever, you're going to take it, or else you ain't yeah, fighting. Yeah. They control the per they control what goes on, you know. And you know they have good good relationships with the promoters and whatnot, but. If there's someone that's concerned there, they have a guy put to put in there. Barbosa could jump right in. He could jump right in. Now, financially, it would be bad, but he can go in. You could still keep that fight alive, a, a fight, that show alive, put it that way, because it, it, um, it would head to disaster land. <laughs> if, it, if it got well, what are we? We're, we're less than a month away now, and, and yeah, if it hasn't been better. called off now, but who knows with Ryan Garcia? I, I mean, who knows what he's going to do tomorrow as the, if the pressure, if it is a pressure thing. Yeah, I was going to say that. You know, if the pressure gets worse, the closer you get to fight date. So mm -hmm. we're less than a month away. I I don't, I'm not like a Garcia hater, uh, 
but it seems like something is off, man. Like if if I were affiliated with him, I wouldn't want to see him fight. But Which supports all, me. I don't know who he has around him, man. I, I, I know how his parents acted at that press conference, and weird. I don't want to judge them. It's but weird. I know how they acted. They they didn't they didn't act like role models. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's what I can. That concerned me too when I saw that. I said, "Look at this nonsense going on here. This could get real ugly really fast." And you don't. I see a lot of this at my kids' basketball games. Mm. You see a lot of this. The parents are kind of, and and the, and the basketball people aren't dealing with millions of dollars. These guys are dealing with millions of dollars. So again, you don't want to put them out there. You don't want to judge it. But that kind of raised a red flag to me. Um, it is professional sports, so it, it was, you know the, the the high school and I'm not the high school, the, the uh, seventh and eighth grade that my kids are in. That's ridiculous. I've never I've never seen such nonsense. Parents <laughs> can be the biggest a holes, man. When they when are. it comes to much they more are. than the 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 kids, right? And and the other thing is, I don't know what. Well, there's one kid that plays on my kids' team that you know he's gonna go he's gonna go D one, but. I mean, none of these kids are going into the NBA. Even even right. that kid who's really good, yeah. really good, he's not going to the NBA. There, he's not. He just not. You would know. They would find you. You would know. Yeah. They they they'll come looking for you. They, they they're not. They're not. It's just not going to happen. And these these parents, my God, it drives <laughs> it drives me insane, insane to to see this stuff here. And then could you imagine on that level where you're dealing with millions of dollars? I wouldn't want to deal with it. I'd say I'm out. Thanks for watching the Zapata Brand Podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast and listen where all podcasts are available.